Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Tuesday Tune. Uh, sorry we did not have a Tuesday Tune for you last week. We were rather snowed under uh, with the workload here in the shop. This week, I am going to have a bit of a chat about uh, when you want to make adjustments to your spring versus your compression damping. So this is a question that we get quite regularly. Um, basically, when is it appropriate to increase your spring rate as opposed to your compression damping? Now, the effects of increasing either one, or decreasing either one, can be quite similar. So, if you increase your spring rate, obviously you have a more firmly sprung bike, you have a firmer feel. Uh, most people would associate, it with the, associate that increase in spring rate with it feeling stiffer. Likewise, increasing the compression damping, whether that be your low speed or your high speed or both, has a similar effect on the feel. Like, it feels like you can't use as much travel or perception is that it is stiffer, there is more resistance to push against. So in that sense, there is some confusion uh, as to which is like the more, the more appropriate adjustment to make in any given situation. Uh, that can be either with the fork or the shock. So for those of you ha who have been watching some of our previous videos, you may remember at one point where we talked about the difference between springs and dampers insofar as springs storing energy and returning it to you and dampers dissipating energy. So when we want to assess whether it's more appropriate to increase or decrease spring rate or compression damping, what I like to do is break it down into essentially two questions. First of all, do you want it to feel firmer or softer? So that tells us which direction we're going to go with our adjustment. For example, if you feel like it's your bike is too stiff, you can't use full travel, uh, or it's harsh over bumps, or whatever it may be, then obviously we want to go softer. Conversely, if you're bottoming out too easily, if you feel like you're pushing through the travel too easily, uh, your fork is diving, the rear end is you know, sagging, squatting too much in the corners, then we want to go to a stiffer saddle. The second question to ask, once you've ascertained whether you want the bike to be stiffer feeling or softer feeling, is then, do we want to deaden the bike or liven the bike? So when we increase the spring rate, we increase the spring's ability to store, for, uh, store energy in a very, or in a, in a given displacement, I should say. So if you increase the spring rate by 10%, uh, you can, for a given displacement, you know, a given amount of compression of the spring, you can store 10% more energy, or conversely, Putting the same amount of energy in means you use less travel. This means that less energy is dissipated by the damper and more is returned to you. So if you find, for example, that you want the bike to be more lively, more poppy uh, and stiffer at the same time, increasing the spring rate may well be the way that you want to go. If you want to stop the bike simply blowing through the travel, but you also want to quieten things down, then assuming your rebound and whatnot is you know, in the ballpark, then you may want to increase your compression depth. So what we have drawn up here is a table of the typical effects of increasing or decreasing uh, your spring rate or your compression depth. Now I haven't broken down compression damping into high speed and low speed. Right now I'm just assuming that we have a fairly simple damper, linear characteristic compression damping applies across the range. In practice, that's really exactly the case, but it should give you some idea as to how the two interact anyway. So, if we go to a stiffer spring rate, so when I say spring more, I mean a stiffer spring rate, then we get something that has a bit more pop, feels a bit more lively. When you push down, you get more back. Um, conversely, increasing your compression damping does the opposite. It deadens the bike somewhat. In some circumstances, increasing the compression damping substantially can give you something more to push against. So sometimes it can make bunny hopping uh, easier or jumping more predictable. Uh, but as a general rule, it dissipates more energy, it makes the thing feel a bit more dead. Increasing your spring rate or increasing your compression damping will both uh, reduce the amount of squatting of the rear end or diving of the front end. Uh, they'll both help keep it up in its travel to a certain degree. The difference is in obviously the way that they do it. The way that spring does it is, again, by storing that energy uh, and holding a certain force when the thing is compressed. The way that the compression damping does it is that it's only giving you support while the fork or the shock is actually moving. So 
that is tied in very closely with how lively or dead things feel. Now let's remember, basically agility is a form of lower stability, instability if you will. Uh, and likewise, something that is stable is essentially dead. Which word we use to describe the two uh, is subjective and it basically becomes, you call something dead when it gets to the point that it's you know more stable than you want it to be. And you call something you know kicky when it's more agile than you want it to be. So, running stiff spring rate also results in less sag. And this can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you're trying to achieve. So, if you are, for example, trying to firm up the back end of your bike for climbing very steep stuff, increasing the spring rate is going to have a much bigger effect than increasing the compression damping there because it will actually alter the geometry of the bike through the sag. However, increasing the spring rate doesn't tend to increase, uh, to improve the overshoot response uh, of the suspension. And what, what I'm referring to there is when you land from a jump or a drop or whatever it is, a big hit, you know, big sudden hit, how quickly the bike stops compressing and is able to return to its normal ride height, basically. So reducing that overshoot is important, especially for races. Uh, in terms of stabilizing the bike as quickly as possible. That is a big part of stability. Less sag from increasing your spring rate, however, can also means you have less negative travel. Um, and that is tied in very closely with the ability of the wheel to follow the ground. So the faster you go with given settings, the lower your dynamic ride height will typically get because we have rebound and compression damping asymmetry. That means that because the rebound damping is substantially heavier than the compression damping, the bike will basically ratchet itself down to a certain degree until the spring force becomes a bit higher and is able to overcome the rebound damping. This is your dynamic ride height. This is only this is something that's only really visible from actually data logging uh, and measuring the position of the bike suspension while you ride it. However, the most tangible effect of that that anyone can feel is if you have for example, a fork spring rate that's too stiff uh, over steppy ground where you don't have enough negative travel for the front wheel to drop away and actually follow uh, the terrain. You really get the sensation of the wheel not following the ground. You get the repeated impact rather than rolling over bumps. Both increasing your spring rate or your compression damping uh, will result in a bike that is harder to bottom out somewhat. Increasing the spring rate will always affect it. Increasing the compression damping will sometimes affect it. In big, long, slow G outs that are just you know a long, hard compression, the compression damping doesn't do a lot. In those cases, uh, the spring has a much bigger effect. But when you slap the ground really hard and the wheels are moving quickly, like the suspension is compressing quickly, then the compression damping has a substantial effect, especially the high-speed compression adjustments. So, if we go to a softer spring rate, we get something that is more dead, has a bit more squat or fork dive, uh, more sag and negative travel, and is easy to bottom out. Likewise, less compression damping, tends to be more lively, have a bit more pop, you know, it'd be a bit easier to uh, pop off loops and whatnot. Can also cause instability if the front and rear aren't balanced. Less stable, a bit more overshoot, but universally, uh, less compression damping will feel better on small bumps. Now, what is very interesting is the fact that you can see there's quite a lot of overlap in terms of, say, increasing your compression damping or decreasing your spring rate. So what you really need to look at is, out of all the you know, four areas that I can go with my compression damping or spring rate here, I can go firmer on them or softer on them, uh, which one do I want to alter to get the effect that I'm looking for? For example, if you're looking to stabilize the bike to deaden it, so then you could go to a slightly softer spring rate or firm compression damping. Then you need to look at, okay, am I able to use full travel right now? Am I using full travel too often? Do I want to uh, firm the bike up while I stabilize it? Or do I want to soften it? So in that regard, it's very useful to understand that there are overlapping effects in both directions. So increasing uh, the spring rate or the compression damping obviously gives you a firmer feel in both cases. Uh, it gives you less travel usage in both cases. But 
conversely, stability, the lively feel of the bike, and each end of the bike, this is where it becomes most useful in my opinion, uh, the liveliness of the bike is really affected inversely by increasing the spring rate of the compression damage. So where this becomes particularly useful is when you want to balance the bike out. Really, really critical in bike parks uh, or anywhere where you're hitting big jumps. It's very handy to think about things in this way, I find, uh, for people who are having trouble with their bike feeling like it's kicking them forwards off jumps. You know, if the front wheel kicks up more than the back, that's usually very easy to deal with. Uh, if the back wheel kicks up, there's only a certain, there's only so far forward you can land on your front wheel before uh, it's game over. No one enjoys it. So that may give you some insight into, you know, if you are feeling that your bike is kicking you funny off jumps or, you know, one end is less responsive than the other, which way you might want to go uh, with your compression damping or your spring rate. To better understand exactly which compression adjustment you might want to make, whether that's high speed or low speed, uh, I'd maybe recommend going back and having a look at, at our other Tuesday Tune video about the way that the high and the low speed uh, adjustments interact. Anyway guys, that's it for the Tuesday Tune this week. Uh, any feedback, comments or questions, please let us know uh, in the comments below. Thank you and we will see you next week.